All right, we're going to use a three-step method again. We've got an uh, arch paper, which is an 8x8 eight eight, uh, drawing on it. And then there is a scrap piece of paper, paper that I always have nearby, which has an L for lights, M for mediums, and D for darks. It's so important in a painting to have a range of lights, mediums, and darks. And what tends to happen with most people who employ me as the watercolor coach is that they tend to paint really, really good paintings, but they all their values and colors are all in the medium range, and they don't stretch it out so that you have lights and darks. And that is, in effect, what you kind of have to do. You have to kind of exaggerate what you actually see in real life. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting to put some value dabs in there. I put, um, uh, uh, <laughs> let's see, I, I didn't use my value finder. I see I oftentimes will use a red plexiglass window as a value finder. I didn't use it in this case. I eyeballed everything. What's important here is that I'm looking for um, grays. There's a lot of gray in this painting. And what I want to do is I want to find those grays, which are going to be in the midtones, and then where I see it in the photograph, put as saturated a color as I can in those places that I see saturated color. That's the reason for that um, dab that went in medium, which looks like a, uh, a red gash. That's going to be really important to me. And the L for the light yellow. What I know for sure, what I'm mapping out right now is that I know I want that lemon slice to be in the light column and around the color of that yellow. I know in the medium that that is going to be my saturated color, that a gash of um, red that I put there. It's not red. It's actually a mix of alizarin crimson and some um, burnt sienna. And now what I'm doing in my dark column is I'm trying to determine how I can find something that's dark and not gray. I need to find a dark that is tips somewhat toward yellow. And in order to do that, I made a lot of test dabs there. Now, what those test dabs were made up of is probably some yellow with its complementary color, a little bit of violet going in. So it's a slightly, I don't know what you call it's not a brown, that's for sure. It's almost slightly leaning toward a green. But that is my, that is my dark that I'm using on the uh, darker side of the lemon where the sun is not hitting it. And now I'm feeling pretty secure. I, I, what I haven't done here, what I haven't done was I'm so in the process that I didn't put my dabs in the individual columns because I'm doing so much comparison. So while I was working in the dark column, I was putting my lights in the dark column as well. Uh, not because I'm not disciplined. I used to be more disciplined in terms of always putting my dabs where they belonged in light, medium, and dark columns. But this time I was doing it because I needed the comparison and I needed to make sure, like I said, that I have a complete value range from lights, mediums, and darks and that they have to be in relationship to each other. So my darks in my dark column are not really very dark but they are dark in relation to the lights that I'm using. Everything is just relative to everything else. And I know when I'm dealing with transparent glass that what I need to do for me is to key everything in kind of a high key. So my darks on this painting probably would be all mediums in a different painting if I wasn't painting a clear piece of glass, which is what I'm doing. So, you know, everything, like I say, everything is completely relative. But the strategy is still the same. The strategy still is to make sure that you have lights, mediums, and darks. You're constantly finding value shapes where you can plug the color into lights, mediums, and darks, and that you're consistent in making sure that they stay relatively light, medium, or dark with each other. So there's my first pass. And I, I like it because I have the transparency that I wanted to get. And you can see all the value dabs I used to get there. Some I used and some I did not. Now I'm going to concentrate on color spots of value. I put a tiny bit of green down below where that, uh, where that lemon is. That is not really what I see with my naked eye, but I can honestly say I feel it. I can feel a little bit of a green happening there. Maybe I'm imagining that I can see it with my eye. I'm not sure. I think what it really is is probably the uh, pink plate when it... Uh, the light coming from the pink plate when it hits the yellow lemon creates a little bit of green right there. You know, sometimes what you see is not based on the individual objects, but how they interact with each other.
And so sometimes you have to trust not what you see as much as what you feel or, or what you might know. And, um, you, you know, colors mix in the atmosphere. You know, it happens all the time. If you've watched a sunset, you've, you're watching color change in atmosphere. And I'm just replicating the process here to the best of my ability. So this was, um, this was in response to, um, there you can see all the color dabs, you can see the photograph, and you can also see my finished response. This was a challenge on Daily Paintworks. They have a, paint, they have a challenge every month, and this month's challenge was to paint something that was cut up. And uh, so this was what I did to, as a result of that challenge. You can go to dailypaintworks.com and take a look at all the other responses. It's a fun community to be a part of. I think it costs $13 a month to join if you want to be a joining member. And when you do that, you can have a website with them that they will host. And you also can enter these challenges, which are, you know, which are just fun. It's fun to have something that um, to look forward to, and it's fun to interact with the other artists. So um, you might want to go there and check it out. And that, like I said, is dailypaintworks.com. Uh, please join my YouTube channel. If you're watching this and you haven't joined, please do. Most of the people who watch have not joined yet. Uh, remember to keep white your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.